Now, when I came to faith back in, uh, this is about 12 years ago, I think it was partly because of the culture that I'd grown up in in Canada, was that at the beginning of each year, you seek God and you get a word about what that next year is supposed to be about, or that God would emphasize something new in your life in that year. And so January 1st, sometimes in December, I'd be praying, God, you know, what do you want to speak to me over this next year? And uh, the first few years, I didn't really get anything. I wasn't sure. I was still learning how to hear God's voice. But now looking back, I actually sat down this last week and wrote out year by year what I sensed that was the main emphasis that God had in my life. And so I would call this knowing your personal prophetic season. That's what I'm calling this short little encouragement is knowing your personal prophetic season. And so when I go back about 10 years ago, I was doing a school with YOM, a discipleship training school. And during that entire year, there was two things that God really highlighted. Number one was my identity, who I was in his eyes, how he felt about me and what he was calling me to do. That was a very important thing to lay the foundation because before that I didn't know who I was or where I was going, what I was supposed to do. And I was kind of like a leaf in the wind being blown everywhere. And then also in that first year was the Bible. I got baptized in the Holy Spirit in that first year and I suddenly had a hunger for the Word of God that I'd never had before. And within the first five months I read the whole Bible And then I started right again, and now over the last 10 plus years, I've read the Bible at least seven different times from cover to cover, and I continue just to spend time in the Word. And I love the the Word. So right in the beginning, God spoke to me about my identity and and, uh, giving me a passion to study the Word of God. Then moving to the next about year to two years, this is 2000 and 2007, 2008, God was highlighting to me about growing strong in the spirit. And uh, I was being led to give up many of my evenings to go and walk through the town that I was living in in California and just praying, praying in tongues. Sometimes 30, 40, 50 minutes at a time, just praying, seeking God. And uh, he gave me one of these scriptures about being strengthened with might by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so everything that I was doing throughout that year was focused on, I want to grow strong in the spirit. I want to have like a backbone. I want to be able to know God. I want to hear his voice. I want intimacy. I want to grow to be a man who's strong, that's not tossed to and fro by the wind and all the popular opinions of our day. And so that was a big, big focus for me. And during that year, I ended up, or over those two years, I did two 40-day fasts. I did a couple 21-day fasts. I just had this supernatural grace upon my life to grow in God, to get strong in the Spirit. And uh, I was just really giving myself to seeking Him in purity and prayer. And uh, so that was 2007, 2008. The next season that the Lord led me into was uh, going to the streets and evangelism. I was praying for the sick. I was wanting to move and see the the gifts of the Holy Spirit operating in my life. And so I was looking to prophesy over people. I was asking God for words of knowledge as I'm on the street sharing with people about Jesus. So then uh, in 2010 was the year that God led me here to Israel. And at that point, I was beginning to really feel like I was catching momentum or building momentum in my life. I was having... uh, favor among the ministry that I was working with, the congregation I was working with in California. Things were getting better. I was beginning to grow in a bit of leadership and influence. And then God brings me to Israel, and I'm a nobody. And the thing that the Lord spoke to me when I came here was, Cody, I want want this season to be focused on growing in my character. And that's what happened. I spent the next couple years learning Hebrew. Nobody knew, knew me in Israel. And I felt like I was like this little ant in the corner. You know, I felt like I've got some things I can offer to Israel. You know, God has deposited things in me. I'm building some momentum in my life. And I get to Israel and it's like nobody even notices you. And so I go for about two plus years of just feeling like a nobody. But yet I I was having just the Holy Spirit working with me. Cody, I'm building more more, uh, gentleness and humility and more love and depth on the inside of you. And you're not going to be looking for man's approval, but you're going to be looking for my approval. You were somebody for me. I was somebody for Liat. Yes, my wife, who I met here. <laughs> I caught one person's attention. <laughs> but then the next year, in 2000, 
um, 12, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me a lot about Israel and the Middle East, the calling of the Jewish people, the calling of Arabs, the reconciliation, a lot of things that uh, we teach here at Revive Israel. And uh, I just found as, as I'm going through the Bible, those kinds of themes were popping up all the time, the conversations I was having. And so then that led me to the next year of 2013 and 14, where the Holy Spirit was inviting me to learn more about the kingdom of God. And for about a year and a half, two years, I learned more about the kingdom of God than I did in my whole life. I was reading books, it, just everywhere I went. I had even this desire to study how governments work. I was learning about ambassadors and ministers and governments, and I was learning about democracies and communism. And I just, on my own free time, I had this unusual desire to learn about how a kingdom functions. What is a king? What is, it, what is a king in the time of the Bible? Those kinds of things. And uh, so today, my, my picture and understanding of the kingdom of God is so much more clear. And it is the central message in the whole Bible. The Bible is about a king and his kingdom. And his name is Jesus, Yeshua. And it's a great honor to serve him. So then as I'm studying the kingdom of God, as the Holy Spirit's highlighting that message for me, the next one that he brought to me was in 2015 and into this last year was leadership. And right around this time, I was uh, put into place here in Revive Israel to begin leading our media team. And I'd been through many leadership courses in my life before this, but if you don't actually have any, when you're leading physically or tangibly, a lot of those teachings seem to go in one ear and out the other. I didn't have any place to apply those leadership skills uh, in an immediate way. And so I received a lot of teaching, heard great things, but I, I seemed to like forget most of it. So then I get put in a place of leadership and now I have to try and remember all these things that I've actually forgotten. And so I had this desire and this hunger over the last year and a half where I, on my own time I'm reading books about leadership. I'm going back to notes that I'd written years and years ago, trying to refresh myself on what are biblical principles to, for leadership. And uh, so now coming into this new season, 2017, I've been seeking God again. What's, what's your word for me this year? And I feel like he's saying, it's still leadership, but I want you to focus more on what is apostolic leadership. And so that's the prophetic season that I'm sensing I'm in right now. That's what the Lord's leading, to, leading me to. And I know that there's prophetic seasons for congregations, for families, for entire nations. But I believe that it's so important that we are aware and tracking with the Holy Spirit of what His personal prophetic season He has for us is. And so I just want to encourage us in that, that we would be paying attention to that. And we can also just understand what, what season we're in by watching what kind of things that we're interested in. You know, as I'm watching TV in the last year and a half, I'll be hearing news stories about some leader in some country who did this, or corruption among leaders, or there's something happening in government, so there's elections, or anything to do with leadership for me, even in the secular world, it draws my attention. I'm paying attention to it, I'm learning. Okay, that's bad stuff to do, this is good stuff to do. Yeah, Liat and I, ever, we watched a, a TV series from America called The Apprentice, Apprentice with Donald Trump, where he brings in some of the top people in America, and he gives them these different tasks to do over a number of weeks, and, at, and each week he's firing someone, but at the end, someone's going to become his apprentice. I learned so much about leadership by watching those, those series. You may think that's a waste of time, but when you, the Holy Spirit's highlighting something in your life, He can speak through so many different ways to train us and educate us and disciple us to grow in that area. And He'll even use secular media to do that sometimes. So I want to just take a second just to pray for us that we would be clear on what is the prophetic season God has for each of us right now. So Father, we thank You that by your Spirit, you speak to us about different things that you want to highlight in our lives. And Lord, I just ask for everyone in this room, everyone watching, that we would know that we know what is the season that you have for us right now. That, that all um, this fogginess would be blown away and that we would come into a place of clarity and confidence and give ourselves to that which you're speaking to us in this season. In Yeshua's name. Amen.